we're up to episode 29 of the emergency storage shed which was built in an emergency for me to store a heap of stuff something every week an episode every week could be a few boxes could be some other stuff let's go and have a look and sort out what we're going to have this week hey guys chris the ultimate recycler welcome back to the channel this episode may be a little bit short if you've seen my recent um, episode on the great farm cleanup you'll understand that when I'm not actually home very much at the moment and it's pretty hard to squeeze these episodes in but I'm going to do it let's go and get something might be just pretty quick but we'll find something of interest I'm sure okay let's peek our heads around the corner and remember we cleared right back to this shelf and we got the last of the boxes from this section the guillotine I'm keeping because I will have a use for that as I explained in the last episode Let's drag this watering can out. It'll be a willow one. And these actually sell very well. Unfortunately, we don't have the rows for it. I do have some at the shop, so I'm not sure if they'll fit or not. But even as it is, a nice old willow galvanized watering can, I would still get possibly $20 for it. They do sell really well. I've seen them sell for up to 40 with the rows on them. So hang on, there's something in there. What's Oh, look at that. There's the watering rose. It's a bit, uh, may not be the right sort. Some of them were sold and some of them screw on. Yeah, it's probably not the right one for it. But you know what? As a decorator item, we might just sell it like that. And let's go $25 and someone can fix it if they want to actually make it usable. So that can go straight to the shop how it is. There are a couple of old cream cans in here, but I'm not going to, I don't think I'll dig them out. Let's start with this shelf. We might make this episode fairly quick. So I'm going to get the milk crate off the top, which I think just has random oils and greases in it. And the little CRT TV, it's a Samsung. We might power that one up and see if it, see if it works. Uh, the CRT TVs sell quite well these days. I don't know if that's particularly desirable being such a small screen. But if we can test it and it does work, I'll put it straight in the shop and we'll work out a price for that. So we'll start with those couple of things. Um, the next shelf down, oh, I'm not sure. That one looks like it has an oil drum or something. I don't know what's in this, possibly hardware. I don't want to make this episode too long. Let's get the first two down and see how we go with that. Okay, this crate does look to have oil and, um, well, workshop products. So that should be pretty easy to sort. And the TV is a heavy little bugger, particularly with my aging shoulders. But we've got it down. It's quite dusty. I don't know if it has a remote, but um, we can plug it in and see if it's going to work anyway. Let's go through this milk crate first. So I doubt we're going to get much uh, value wise as far as adding to our list, although the little tin funnel will sell. I wonder if it's a willow one. I can't see any brand on it. But you know they clean up very well and a little bit of clear lacquer, that will look magnificent. We should get at least five for that one. Uh, we have some two-stroke oil. A lot of these have come out of people's sheds and it's always a little bit risky using them if they've been opened. There's a standard 20W50 four-stroke oil. Uh, you can usually pick if the four-stroke oils are okay. Sometimes people put sump oil back in them. But this looks nice and clean a nice honey color so that's never been used that will be handy for like an oil change on the lawnmower uh, something like that uh, but i don't want to keep too much of that sort of stuff here i think i've actually got enough oil so we'll probably sell this um, i'd probably just put five dollars on it it's oh it's three quarters full at least and anyone that wants to buy it will soon tell with a quick test like i did that it, it is new oil you know, you may not put it in your good car, but it might be fine in the farm ute or the ride-on mower. Um, it's clearly a clean oil. It's not been used. So $5 perhaps for that one. This one's labelled gear oil. And again, we can check it. It's quite an old container, this one. But gear oil's fine for putting in all sorts of gearboxes. And that's a nice clean honey colour as well. And you can smell gear, gear oil. It has a, a very strong smell. So that does smell correct. So I'm sure that's what it is. 
and it looks nice and clean and unused. Uh, I won't have a use for that here, so I think that might be another one to go to the shop for $5. And again, that's almost full. This last one, uh, okay, more engine oil. Just uh, Is that the same as the other one? Yeah, Velveline. And we'll check that one as well, just to make sure it's not sump oil or it doesn't look used. And that one's nice and clean too. So, uh, And that's almost full as well. So we'll go $5 each on these. I will just clean the tops of the containers up so they're not quite so messy. And I'm sure a farmer will recognise that these are pretty good value. I don't know what four litres of quality engine oil would cost you these days. Probably $30, $40 maybe. Particularly if you buy it at a service station. Um, but maybe if you get it through a, a proper um, car place, they're a bit cheaper. But look, $5 each, someone will recognise that as good value, and it gets it out of my shed. Last thing in here is uh, grease, castor oil grease. I have one of these somewhere, which much the same, it's just a multi-purpose grease. I do use a little bit, bit of it, but one of these would last me for my lifetime. And as I said, I've got one, so we'll put that in the shop. That feels near full. I'll just clean that one up a bit as well, and there's another $5, I'm sure. So there we go, we have another milk crate back. Awesome, now let's check this TV out. So I've just cleaned up all these. We'll put them in a, uh, a crate and take to the shop. I forgot about this one. This is near full. It is um, good oil as well, so another $5 there. So that's going to add up to a little bit. Much better than tipping it out or taking it to the um, transfer station for recycling when it still can be used. The TV, I've just wiped the dust over it. Before I plug it in, I thought I might power it up through my dim bulb tester in the other room just to make sure it hasn't got any bad shorts or, or there's some catastrophic issues with it. Once it fires up in there, I'll bring it back out here and I've got a DVD player that we can plug in because I don't have an antenna in the shed here. It has got audio visual input, so uh, we should be able to run a DVD player or a, what have I got? I don't think I've got a VHS ready to go, so, but we'll power it up on the dim bulb first and make sure it actually powers up fine without issues. All right, I've made enough room on the bench here, I think. I've got my dim bulb tester mounted on the wall. I haven't got back to do another video on that. I was going to incorporate, if I move the camera up here a little bit, I was not going to incorporate a nice old voltmeter and I was hoping to find an ammeter, but I haven't got one. However, I did uh, buy a nice little readout display that'll give me amps, voltage and um, power as well. So I might incorporate that into a little box, but we'll do a separate video on that down the track. But in the meantime, the dim bulb tester is mounted up under the shelf there against the wall, and it's in perfect working order through the isolation transformer and the variac. So we'll plug it in, and now we can power it up. Whoa. That's interesting. The bulb's drawing full current. Why is that? TVs take a lot to power up. We have, I think it's only a 40 watt bulb. Let's turn that off for the moment. So maybe the TV has an issue. I haven't powered a TV up on a dim bulb tester before, but we might need to go for a higher wattage bulb. Let's go a 75 watt bulb and we'll try it again. No, so I think the TV is drawing way too much current than what it should. Uh, there might be a direct short, there might be some sort of fault Oh, hang on. Now the bulb dims off. So maybe the TV just takes a lot of current when it's first warming up. I'm still getting used to how these dim bulb testers work, but that's really interesting. So now the dim bulb isn't taking any of the current and the TV, but it hasn't done anything. Okay, so that's on. When you press the switch on, the bulb lights up momentarily but we're not getting any screen action. Okay, I don't know what's going on here, but the bulb tells me there's no current being drawn at the moment. The TV should be on. There's nothing happening. It's clearly got a fault. Uh, I'm, I'm going to value this TV at the moment at zero, uh, but I might take the back cover off. We might do a separate video on that when I have time. And we'll see if we can sort out what's going on because I don't want to throw it out. It might be fixable. It might be a simple problem. Don't know. But obviously it's got an issue and I can't sell it like this. 
So here we go, finishing up this episode. Not very much value, but we do get some stuff out of the shed. Well, actually, we don't get very much out of the shed either because I'll have to have a look at that little telly. We'll do that soon because I don't want it hanging around. Uh, our value, well, really, we just had all the oils at $5 each, the funnel, which I haven't cleaned up as yet, and the watering can, $55, TV to be inspected. The 55 adds to our total, and I think we're about... 5,830 or something. I hadn't checked the last time and I guessed around 6,000, but we're not quite at that yet. But it's not about the value here. It's about dealing with stuff rather than throwing it out. Someone will get a bargain with the oil and they'll appreciate being able to use some cheap oil. It's, well, good quality oil for the cheap. And hopefully we can get that TV going in a future video. That could be interesting. If not, I'll scrap it out or it'll go to the e-waste. Um, at the transfer station but the CRT TVs are worth trying to preserve these days there's less and less of them around and they do have a following so thanks for watching guys just a quick one this time I've got to squeeze these videos in with everything else that's going on and I don't want to miss a week so fingers crossed I can still do it uh, we haven't had a lot of value as I said but we've got some more stuff out of the place and that's got to be good uh, and I'm trying really hard not to bring anything in except for some things that will be staying once it's set up as a workshop. So I think that's acceptable. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.